Okay, we're going to take you through object-oriented programming by coding the game of pig. So it's a pretty simple game, but let's kind of show you how it works. What it is, is you're trying to get a score of 100. In our case, I'm going to try and get to a score of 50 so we don't spend forever playing this game. That's what we're, that's our goal is. Now the way you get points is by rolling the dice. And if you roll the dice, it, that number just keeps adding into your score unless you roll a 1. So you can choose to pass the dice off to the other player um, and then you keep your score. But if you roll a 1, you lose your points for that particular round. Okay, so we're going to play this you guys versus me. I'm going to start off and I have a dice roller here behind us. I'm going to start off because I am making this video so I get to choose. So my score is, and here we go, I'm going to roll. So I got a 2. I'm going to choose to roll again. Let's put this so we can see our score at the same time too. Uh, I'm going to choose to roll again if I could find the roll button. There we go. Roll. Okay, so that's another two. So, so far I have four. I'm going to roll one more time. That's another two. That's a total of six. Ooh, I'm going to roll one more time. Three. So, six plus three is nine. Um, I think I'm going to stop at nine. So, my score is currently a nine. Okay, your turn. What is, what... Let's put your score. Your score is currently zero. What do you want to do? Well, obviously you want to roll. Okay. Okay, you got a one. Now it's my turn. You've lost your round. And no, I didn't fix this. I, it just happened. Sorry. Okay, my turn. So I have a nine. I'm going to keep rolling from there. But I'm not going to add nine in. I'm just going to keep track of my round total. So I have a five. I've got a four is nine. So, so far my round total is a nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm going to stop there. 14 plus 9 is 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. There you go. I have a score of 23. Okay, your turn. You've got to catch up. 4, 1. No, I did not fix this. It's completely random. Sorry. All right, so your score stays at a zero, and now I'm going to go. I'm going to roll two plus one. I lose my chance. Now it's your turn. Um, you got a four. That You're up to seven now. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Do you want to roll again? I would because I'm higher. Okay. I heard the yes, right? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Do we risk it? One more. Are you playing edgy? 17, 18, 19. Okay, let's stop at 19. That's pretty close. Good job. You, you're, you're catching up. Okay, my turn. One, and I lose. Now it's your turn. Roll. And you won. Now we, you, you lost that round now too. My turn. Five, seven, I'm at ten, fourteen. You get the idea, and the first person to fifty wins. Okay, so let's code this. Um, I'm going to open up JGrasp. I've got my comments. I'm going to get rid of my score. I want, if you notice, the two big objects in this, there was you playing and me playing. So I'm going to have my class, my object, that my, my blueprint be a pig player. Someone who is playing pig. Now I don't have to have my public static void main in this because this is not where it's going to be. I'm going to have two files in this program. I'm going to save this right now before I forget. Save as, yeah, this looks good. Okay, so now there were two things, a couple of things that we had in this. We have attributes about a pig player. You have a dice, you have a round total, you have a round total, a score, like a, an overall score. So those are going to be our private variables. So I'm going to say private, if I could type, 
how come it's not typing? Private int uh, score. Score is going to be my overall score. Private int, um, how about round score? That could be my the score for each round. I'm going to have a variable for the dice. And if you have singular dice, it's actually called die. And then private string name. That way we could put our name in, in this. Plus that way it gives me a chance to show you what a constructor is. Okay, this is something I did not talk about in the video. A constructor allows you to have default values for any of your private variables. For example, and your constructor does not have a return type. It is public. So, and it has to be the same name as the class. So I'm going to copy this in private public pig player. It still has an open close squiggly brackets. There it is. There is our constructor. So we're going to set the default name to be uh, computer. No, because we're not playing against the computer. We're playing against oh, a two-player game. Um, how about player? How about just player? Player one? Just player sounds good. So a constructor lets us set these default values up. There's no, uh, you could also put them up here like dice equals zero, stuff like that. Both places worked, but I wanted to show you two places because I also want to show you an overloaded constructor. So here, this is a constructor, sets up default, D-F-A-U-L-T, there we go, values for a class. All right. Um, uh, this might work if you had some sort, like usually you could just declare, you initialize the values of the variables up here, but you might have some sort of algorithm that you have to mathematically calculate it, and that's why they have constructors. But overloaded constructors allow us to set default values. And oh, here's an overloaded constructor, and the way I know it's overloaded, because it differs in the number of parameters. So I'm going to have uh, the uh, the name, the person's name, and I want to spell it differently. Wow, that was weird. I want to spell it differently from um, what am I saying? Sorry, my I my laptop wasn't charging, so I gotta make sure it is because I'm running out of battery space or battery juice. Okay, so. Default constructor differs from the number of parameters. So I'm going to put in name. I have to spell it differently from here. I'm going to put in uh, username or player name, I guess. Player name's probably better, huh? Because it's going to be the player's name. Okay, now what I'm trying to do is since these values are private, I want to be able to set this value just from my constructor without having to have a setter because I'm not going to have a setter for that in this class. I don't ever want to change their name, so I don't really need a setter. But when they create the player, I do want to be able to set what their name is. Here I'm going to set the name variable equal to whatever my formal parameter is. That way I can change the value, uh, what did I call it, player name. There it is. So just a little recap. This one is a, an overloaded constructor. Once again, same name as the class. It allows you to set default values. F-A-U-L-T. All right, there is our class. Okay, so things that we might need. We might need, I don't think we're going to need any setters because our die is going to be random and we never are going to need to set what our score is. So I don't have an example. Oh, so we better do a, an example of a set name just so we can show you. Let's do a setter just so we can show you a setter. I don't think we're going to use it in our code. We can. We'll do it. A setter allows us to set the value of a variable. And since I'm going to do name, I'm going to say public void set name. And I'm going to give it a new name. They've already got a default name. This is changing the name later on in the code. All I have, so I have public, void, it's not returning a value, set name, it's named, kind of like my variable, 
but with the keyword set in front of it now I know it's a setter and then there's a parameter of the same type of the value I want to set so in my setter all I have to do is set my variable equal to my formal parameter the new name that's it that is a setter we'll show you how to use this a little bit later on when we code the main portion Okay, I do want a couple of getters. If I'm in main, I want to be able to have access to the score and the round score and the die. So I'm going to do a couple of getters for those. To do a getter, you simply put, you have to put public, and you're going to do the return type as whatever value they're getting. So in our case, it's all ints. So I'm going to say public int get score. Now the only thing I have to do in here is return that value variable, return score. And this gives me read access to the score. I don't have write access to the score because I don't have a setter, nor would I want to. Why would I want to allow the user to set the score? They'd just set it to 50 and win and not even play the game. All right? So it kind of gives us control over what people can do with our class that we're creating. Okay, I want one for the dice value too, the, the die value. Okay, try this out. Try and do a getter for the die value. Pause the video because I'm going to show you anyway. And do a getter for the die value and the, what else do we need? And the round score. Okay, I hope you pause the video because I'm going now. And you could call that whatever you want. I called mine die value. We could say get die and shorten it. Well, that's, but that sounds so evil. Get die? You know, I can't do it. I'm going to say get, get die value. Okay, and then the score. We already have score, round score. Public int get round score. And that's just going to return the round score. All right, so those are all little behavior getters. Um, there's one other thing I didn't talk about in our video, and that is a toString method. A pub a toString method is always called toString, and it just allows us to display the entire information for our class. So here, all I'm going to do is return all of the variables concatenated as a string so I can see the amounts. So I'm going to say return name well name plus I'm gonna put some space after the name and then maybe the word oh, I'll put a little colon colon spaces round score I want to see what their round score is so I'm gonna end the string there plus my round score Plus, then I'll put a couple of spaces, and then I'll want to show what my actual overall score is, plus score, semicolon. So all this is doing is, it, it, it's, it's usually helped in debugging, but it's actually going to display our program too. It helps us display all the information about the class. Oh, we don't have the die though, do we? That's okay, we'll do that later. We don't need the die. It's going to change every time anyway. Okay, so far so good. I've gotten my whole class done except for one thing. I want to do the actions. Okay, the actions are to roll the dice. The player can either roll the dice or pass the dice. Those are the only two actions in this game. So here I'm going to do, if you roll the dice, you're not really returning any value, either passing the dice. So both of these are going to be void methods. They still have public, but instead of int, it's going to be void. So there's my public int roll, or excuse me, public void roll, and there's my pass. Okay, all I need to do is simulate rolling the dice here. Okay, this means I'm going to need a random number generator. Okay, so we're going to come up to the top here. We need a private. Okay, the random generator is a special case. Um, what an instance variable means is for every instance of the class, we want to create, uh, let me show you. Um, we want to create a variable for that instance. For example, in this particular game, I am going to have a player for the, the um, player one 
and I'm going to have a player two. Okay, now player one is going to have their own score. Player two is also going to have their own score. And it might be different. This score might be five. This score might be 12, 21. I said it backwards, dang it. So score is an instance variable because for every player, every instance of the class that I create, I have a variable and it has a different value. The problem with the random number generator is that if I each of us have our own random generator, it will give me the same sequence of numbers. So it will work, but I'll be able to predict what the next random number is based upon what player one's got outcome was. So I don't want to have player as an instance, or excuse me, I don't want to have the random number as an instance variable. I want it to be a shared variable amongst both of these guys. That way I'll get just a new random number in my sequence. To do this, to make a shared variable amongst all instances of my class, I use the keyword static. Where have you seen static before? Oh yeah, public static void main. Stat main is a static method because it's shared amongst all instances of the class. That's all static means. Okay, so I'm going to do a random. I'm just going to call my generator gen. Okay, since I have my random generator in, I do need to import it. All right, so well, it's not java.awt, it's java, what is it, .util? There it is, java.util.random. Uh, just checking, making sure you're, you're, you're paying attention, right? Okay, so now we have our generator. Now that we have it, we can roll the dice. So I'm going to set my die value equal to a, my generator.nextInt, and it's going to be a random number from 6 starting at 1. My range is 6, my start is 1. Okay, now that I have my random generator, I want to update my round score as well. So here I'm going to say, uh, actually I want to determine, I don't necessarily want to do that. If the die value is 1, then I want to set my round score to 0 because that means I've just lost the round anything else, then I want to uh, add to my round score. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, there's two ways of doing this, remember, we could say round score equals round score plus the new dice value, and the shortcut, if you remember, is just a plus equals. I'm updating, I'm adding the round score in, or the die value into the round score. And that's it. All I'm doing is that every time I roll, I keep track of my round score. Now when I pass, when I pass the dice, that's when it updates my actual score of the game. So I'm going to say score plus equals round score. Now I don't want that to happen multiple times, so after I update my total score, my round score gets set back to zero. So that way when I start the next round, it starts from from zero rather than at, you know get growing exponentially. Okay, this is my pig pa player class. Catch me in the next video and we will actually code the driver, the actual game that uses two pig player classes.